it's not a coincidence he goes after football clubs and uh, you know the Russian regime extends out vast it's not just Putin down from Putin are the oligarchs there's a load of organized crime there and they want legitimacy so when uh, uh, Chelsea's bought by a, a prominent Russian it makes you think that the Russian regime is acceptable. Millions of people who like Chelsea, millions of people like the Premier League, are getting propaganda given to them. That's uh, undisputed. When Gazprom, which is, again, a state-backed Russian company, sponsors the Champions League, it's the tendrils, the tentacles of the Russian state getting everywhere. And that makes it harder and harder to say no to Putin. And the British government, over years and years, has not managed to entirely say no to Putin. So he feels stronger, he gets stronger, and then he thinks... You know, if I go into Ukraine, I went in 2014 and took Crimea. I've been in Chechnya. I've been in Georgia. The West aren't going to do very much. We're too intertwined now. They like our money. We're involved in their culture. We're involved in their football. And now he's surprised that actually for once... People have turned around and said no. And one of the developing stories, though, over the last 48, 72 hours has been the fact that uh, there could be sanctions imposed on Russians and their assets in this country. Of course, that brings Chelsea Football Club uh, very much into play, despite the fact that Roman uh, Abramovich released a statement at the weekend saying that he was handing over the the day-to-day running of the club to a charitable foundation. Whether they want to run the club on a (laughs) day-to-day basis is still open to debate. We've got Ushmanov. Well, that's uh, still not settled, is it? Exactly, who is heavily involved. uh, Everton, who from what's being reported this morning, is also on that government hit list. How will it affect Chelsea and Everton? Could the government seize control of Chelsea Football Club? Is that a possibility? It's, I don't think it's likely, but it's definitely a possibility. Because if you start sanctioning individuals, and we don't know if, if Abramovich Abra- has even been sanctioned yet. There's 100 people allegedly being sanctioned by the government. They've not named all of them. But interesting that he made those statements over the weekend and decided to seize stewardship of the club just prior to these 100 individuals and the list circulating. Yeah, and he wants to protect them. But I, 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 I'm interested in your thoughts on this, but do Chelsea fans care? Do Newcastle fans care that uh, the money that is gonna, that's going to keep them up, that's going to have supported them, is, is to a certain extent blood money. It comes out of the Saudi regime. That Saudi regime has committed human uh, uh, rights abuses. Everyone knows that. It's well documented. They would say they were owned by the PIF, the Public Investments Fund. But, but that's just a... That's just a, f- a facade, and it's a farce and a facade, I would say. The money clearly comes out of the Saudi regime, does it not? <laughs> Well, not, the chairman of the uh, the PIF is Mohammed bin Salman, yeah. so the answer to that was probably yes, but they would say that it's a completely separate entity. And, and with Chelsea, Ab- Abramovich would say he's a businessman, but to be a businessman uh, in Russia means a certain amount of compromise with the state. And all I'm saying is that if you're a Chelsea fan, do you think I'm worried that my club has gone to this superpower in Europe because of Roman Abramovich and therefore because of Putin and because of Russian money. Does that bother you as a fan? I think certainly there were a lot of Chelsea fans who were as unhappy as the rest of us when that statement came out on Saturday night and didn't mention Russia, didn't mention Putin, didn't mention the aggression or the invasion. We didn't mention uh, Ukraine in, in actually Ukraine until the Sunday. Until the following day. Chelsea tried to patch that up with a, with a second statement. I'm not sure it really did that so I think Chelsea fans are concerned I think the difference is that they're turning on their televisions and they're seeing the Russian aggression in Ukraine it isn't out of sight out of mind anymore yeah, that, that, that's a good point. And we all have to, I mean, as you say, we're all compromised by this to a certain extent. We're all part of this, this country where we, where, 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 where we live. But there comes a point, does there not, and this is what appears to have happened, that we've been willing to tolerate an awful lot with Putin. But we tolerated, let's be very clear about this, he committed a nuclear terror act on our shores. He killed Litvinenko with radium poisoning on our shores. He killed a British citizen accidentally with poison on our shores. He took a plane out of the air. He's been invading other countries. He's supported Assad in Syria. We've swallowed an awful lot from Putin. And it's perhaps surprising is the main thing that we're not willing to swallow it. It's good, I think. But it's a question for football fans. It's a question for British citizens, British companies, the British media, the British political elite to say, why did it take us so long to get here? But FIFA have only acted, really, because as ever, it's about, it's about direct action from people themselves. Poland said, we're not going to play Russia. You can say what yeah. you like to us. We are not going to play Russia. Stick it. And FIFA would have undenied, and, you know, FIFA are a corrupt, supine organisation uh, with no moral sense whatsoever. And the fact that they've done this is laudable to a point. But they've known, again... It's taken them, it took a them a week. Yeah. Oh, they didn't answer the first letter that Poland sent them asking for the yeah. game to be mm. postponed. And it's taken them a week, but as we know... Putin is who he's always said he is. You know, this is not just the last week. It's not just this invasion. It's lots of other acts, and it's taken them a long time to, to, to warm up. Stig, uh, you're back on The Breakfast Show on Times Radio tomorrow morning from 6, is that right? Yep, 6 in the morning, 6 till 10. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate it. And for all the very latest developments thank on the me. situation in Ukraine, listen to The Times Radio on DAB, smart speaker, and via the free app. Jim White and Simon Jordan. 
Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.